As the world descended into synchronized tyranny, I began to ask myself, how did they get everyone to go along with this? Obsessed with finding the answer, I began studying every moment in recorded history where masses of people devolved into a state of self-destruction. Down that rabbit hole was where I discovered the work of G. Edward Griffin. Gentlemen, again let me say welcome to our home. Since the 1960s, Mr. Griffin has been warning the world of the communist plot to overtake America. Yes, I know, communism. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. That thing we've all been told fell with the Berlin Wall. How do you measure such an astonishing moment in history? It was Napoleon who said, history is a lie agreed upon. Ironically, there's no evidence that Napoleon ever said that. As we're about to discover together, much of our history has been rewritten to serve an agenda that up until recently was invisible to the average person. Average like this guy. Everyone's talking about the necessity for change right now, particularly here in the U.S. Over the past few months, as a filmmaker, I've had the honor of documenting the political revolution. That was me in 2016, the year of my political awakening. Come on, board the political revolution. I was touring with the Bernie Sanders campaign, creating media to help his grassroots movement grow. At that time, I knew very little about socialism and even less about democratic socialism. As it turned out, I wasn't the only one. So my Bernie bros, how do we redistribute wealth through taxation without expanding the powers of the federal government? Bernie Sanders! As confusion set in, I began turning my questions inward. Are they hypnotized? Am I hypnotized? That question, that one simple question activated some strange sort of faith healing. Suddenly, I could see. How did I not see this before? There were so many red flags. I'm well aware that whether you're here in person or through the medium of motion picture, that for most of you, it's not easy to fit meetings of this kind into your schedules. But the fact that you are here indicates that you do have an interest in the subject. So in order not to waste any of your time, let's dispense with the usual preliminaries and get right down to the business at hand. We're going to examine in quite a bit of detail the communist theory and practice of revolution particularly as applied to the United States. Now, this will not be something dreamed up out of thin air. This will be the strategy as taught by them and advocated by them in their own manuals, in their textbooks, and in their schools. The uh, new program of the Communist Party on this subject has this to say. The term socialism describes but the first stage of a new society that in its full development is called communism. Socialism is a transitional stage. Jim Carrey, everybody. <laughs> I went out today and bought me some freedom-friendly Nikes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a salute to Colin Kaepernick, to Nike. Congratulations on right. your fantastic choice. Thank you so much. Well, it's I, good to be back it's in great to dystopian be... America. <laughs> <laughs> the Republicans are running with the word socialism. They're trying to say... They're trying to scare people. They're scare to people. Say, it's communism. It's Venezuela, Trump says. You're, oh. We're going to be living in Venezuela. I grew up in Canada. I'm here to tell you that this bullshit line that you get on all of the political shows from people is that it's a failure. 
The system is a failure in Canada. It is not a failure in Canada. I never waited for anything in my life. I chose my own doctors. My mother never paid for a prescription. It was fantastic. And I just got back from Vancouver. And I keep hearing this, like, Canadians are so nice. Canadians are so nice. They can be nice because they have health care. <laughs> because they have a government that cares about them. In Canada, the authorities say it's now a state of emergency. It's riot swept through Canada's capital. Today, police in Ottawa used batons and pepper spray. We just trampled that lady. Look what you did to her! Medical wait times in this country are longer than ever. The cost of living just keeps climbing. There's a socialist coup unfolding in Canada, and we taxpayers are funding it. In the recent years, a lot of Canadians have been watching their once well-regarded country become what some are even calling tyrannical. A country previously hailed as the most free and democratic in the world. Now, the People's World, the official West Coast newspaper of the Communist Party, ran this rather interesting editorial. What is needed now is an effort that begins to approximate the magnitude of the problem. As a minimum, such a program should demand massive emergency action by the federal government. The federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. If you are involved in this protest, we will actively look to identify you and follow up with financial sanctions and criminal charges. Banks have already started to freeze the accounts of people involved in the protest. Please get out. Immediately get out. Intimidating people in a church during the Passover. Unbelievable. Growing up under communist dictatorships, I have been warning Canadians that that's what's coming. I could smell it. I could see it at every corner. We will not put up with this anymore. We are fighting back. Protests, public protests, are an important part of making sure we're getting messages out there. Uh, but using protests to demand uh, changes to public policy um, is something that, that I think is, is, is worrisome. So here we have the Prime Minister of Canada saying that yes, we have a highly functioning democracy and they have the right and freedom to protest. However, if those protests are used to demand change in government policy, then no. The small fringe minority or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing. Do not represent the views of Canadians who know that following the science and stepping up to protect each other is the best way to continue to ensure our freedoms, our rights, our values as a country. Liberal Prime Minister Justin Trudeau claims to be following the science, but Trudeau's science often comes in the form of this bizarre authoritarian technocracy. I think that Justin Trudeau stepped on the landmine when he weaponized the banking system in Canada against the truckers. Those peaceful trucker protests, you know, their most violent act was honking their horns. And in retaliation, they had their access to their bank accounts, and anybody that supported them in any way had their access to bank accounts eliminated. And at that moment in time, we all came to realize what was really going down. Even with Sun TV watching for any slip, he was asked which country he most admired and referred to China. The level of admiration I actually have for China, um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them. I applaud China for stepping up. Excuse me, I applaud Canada. I'm, you can tell what I'm thinking. <laughs> who openly admires the Chinese basic censored, dictatorship censored, who censored. tramples on fundamental rights by persecuting and criminalizing his own citizens as terrorists just because they dared to stand up to his perverted concept of democracy should not be allowed to speak in this house at all. Mr. Trudeau, please spare us your presence. Thank you. Canadians know where I stand. This is a 
a moment for responsible leaders to think carefully about where they stand and who they stand with. While Justin Trudeau makes a compelling case study, he is not the only dictator on the rise.